Well, it was late last week we highlighted, watch out, we were tracking a tropical wave coming off Africa, and we said this was the system to watch. We said that for the upcoming week and by mid-September, and indeed, that is the system to watch. This is Lee, which is a strengthening storm here this afternoon as it continues to pull to the west-northwest at about uh, 12 to 14 miles per hour. It's located about 1,150 miles to the south and southeast of the northern Leeward Islands. And again, that movement to the west-northwest. Now, we've been calling for this for days. This is going to rapidly intensify. Let me show you why. What do we look for for intensity of tropical cyclones. There are three conditions we look for. Warm water, limited wind shear or light winds aloft, and sufficient moisture. Dry, dusty air will prohibit deep convection, and it's that deep convection, those showers and thunderstorms, that are one of the engines for developing tropical systems. All right, so what do we have going on right now? Let's take a look at the water temperatures. Here, here I have a heat Lee highlighted. These are not the te water temperatures, these are the anomalies. Is it above or ab uh, below normal? Keep in mind, this time of the year, water temperatures are at their warmest in the tropical Atlantic. Not only is it warm water, it's, it's above normal by a few degrees, four or five degrees. So this is exceptionally warm water that it is over right now. Now, just because you have warm water doesn't mean you're gonna get tropical development. Now we look at the other two ingredients. Do we have uh, dry air coming into the center of the storm? Let's take a look at the water vapor loop. Again, I have Lee highlighted. You will take note, there is a lot of dry air in the pathway of Lee, but you'll note that the dry air is not coming into the storm. In fact, it's being pushed away from the center of circulation. And you see this a lot with these developing cyclones, the de these developing storms. Oftentimes, they produce their own environment on which to thrive. That's what's going on with Lee right now, and it, it looks better and better even on the water vapor loop here. The other thing I want to point out, wind shear. If, if, if I saw, uh, as we see, here's wind shear. You see this across the Bahamas where, the, where things are moving from southwest to northeast? I don't see that in Lee's path. There is some wind shear, but it's going with the storm. Think of it this way. Imagine you're walking on the beach and you're walking along the beach and you have uh, the wind is at your back, right? If it's at your back, it's going with you. You're able to move a lot easier. But if it's coming in your front or a headwind, you're actually walking against the wind in your struggle. Pretty much the same thing with wind shear. What wind shear we have is going with Lee. So that's keeping a lid on rapid intensification, but I think the wind shear is not strong enough to prohibit intensification. So I think there's gonna be gradual intensi intensification over the next couple of days. We have all the ingredients, and then as we get into Friday, and then we get into early next week, the wind shear really lets up. We are over very warm water, and we expect Lee to rapidly intensify into a major hurricane, certainly by Saturday morning. That's when we're talking about winds of at least 111 miles per hour. Once you get to Category 4, you're talking about 130 miles per hour, and we think the winds can get easily up to about 145 miles per hour, and it's not out of the question that Lee could become a Category 5 hurricane. If that happens, that would be Tuesday into Wednesday. Category 5 is over 156 mile per hour winds. I'm telling you, the atmosphere is going to be pristine for development, and you're going to be watching Lee on Monday and Tuesday, and you're going to see a closed circulation. You're going to see an unbelievable eye in the middle of this hurricane, and it's going to be terrifying to look at. That's what, that, what Lee is going to look like early next week. Now, impacts, by the way, there will be some impacts on Puerto Rico, and, the, and the, the Windward Islands, I think most of the wind and rain will stay off to the north. We'll have to check on the size of the hurricane. But I think there are some impacts. Certainly, there's going to be very rough seas now and rip currents. Now, there's a trough coming into the eastern United States as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. That's why you see this turn to the north of Lee. It's this trough that will eliminate the following areas from a direct impact, southeastern North Carolina, South Carolina, and all of Florida, you're not going to have a direct impact. However, the, the real tricky part of the forecast is, is what happens then as we get into late week. Well, there's a couple of scenarios. We have another trough coming into the eastern United States Thursday and Friday. Now, the, 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 the strength and the speed of this trough is the key. 
there's a couple scenarios. Here's one of them. That is, it, it's a fast-moving trough. It's a little weaker, but it's a fast-moving trough, and it's able to move far enough south to pick up Lee and steer it away from the United States Thursday into Friday. That is one scenario. The other scenario is, well, instead of the trough being weak, it's going to be stronger, slower, and farther west. And if that's the case, that means Lee comes right toward the United States. And in this scenario, I think anywhere from the Outer Banks of North Carolina to Nova Scotia, you're in the discussion for direct impacts from Hurricane Lee. Now, it is important to note, by the time we get into Thursday and Friday, Lee will be undergoing wind shear. It's, the atmosphere is not going to be pristine, so Lee will probably start to lose wind intensity. No, it, it will. So it's not going to be a Category 5 as it approaches it in this scenario, but it's certainly going to be a strong hurricane. So again, that's the key. What is the next trough going to do? Is it a little faster and weaker that it comes toward the U.S. and steers Lee out to sea? Or is it slower, stronger, farther west, and then we have some problems? So I want to leave you with this. Here's what you need to know. Lee may approach Category 5 status in the southwest Atlantic early next week. I think there's at least a threat to the northeast coast late next week. And, and again, we're highlighting that area right now from the Outer Banks of North Carolina and Nova Scotia. Now, regardless of whether Lee stays offshore or comes toward the United States, there is going to be dangerous surf and dangerous rip currents up and down the eastern seaboard all next week.